Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our celebration of National Nutrition Month. My name is Julia Demeray, and I am a health and wellness specialist with the Department of Parks and Recreation. Before we begin, let's review a few housekeeping items. You should see a microphone icon at the bottom of your screen, like you see here on this screen. You will need to click this icon to mute yourself. We would ask that you remain muted to limit any distractions during the program. Next, I want to draw your attention to the camera icon. You will use this to turn your camera off and on. Please be mindful that when your camera is on, all participants joining us this evening will be able to see your screen. You have the option to keep your camera on or turn it off, but remember we want to minimize distractions throughout the program and keep the focus on the presentation being provided. The last icon I want to tell you about is the chat icon. This will allow you to ask questions throughout the program. To type a question, you will just click on the icon like you see here to bring up the chat box and it should take you to what you see next. Once you see the chat box, as you see on the screen here, there will be a space for you to type your question in. Hit enter and we will see your question on the screen. Please ask your questions throughout the program and there will be time at the end for additional questions. We look forward to a great discussion. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our trained professional for the evening. Rosalind Law's education has equipped her with extensive knowledge in holistic nutrition, health coaching, clinical herbs, and preventative health. Drawing on these skills and her knowledge of di different dietary theories, she works with clients to help them make lifestyle changes that produce real and lasting results. Rosalind received her training as a health coach from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition's Innovative Health Coach Training Program. She also received training as a clinical herbalist from the Mid-Atlantic School of Herbalism and the Smile Herb Shop. As a clinical herbalist, she can provide a complete assessment and recommend a customized list of herbal remedies for her clients. She uses food, herbs, and exercise for healing and maintaining a heavenly body. Welcome, Roz. Yes, hello, hello, hello. I had to go, I had to come over there and run over there real quick. How are you? Hello, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that introduction. I am so happy to be here and we're going to get started. I am elated. So listen, first of all, what I want to say is that um, you already heard about how you type in the chat. Please feel free to type in the chat. Anything you want to ask me, if I can answer it, that's going to be good. This is a back and forth session. Okay, so no question will be judged, <laughs> judge, judge in a negative way. All right. It's a non no, I call it a no judgment zone. All right. All right. All right. So we're going to get started. I'm Rosalind. And first of all, I always say I always started off with, you know, when you're about to go into the kitchen, you got to wash. You got to scrub, 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 scrub up to your elbows. Make sure you're getting everything clean because you don't want those germs and bacteria in, in, to be in your foods and for you to get sick. But before that, when you go to, to the store, you know you got to choose your produce because we're going to do two of my favorite uh, recipes. But produce section if it's whatever the fruits and vegetables that you get, wash them really nicely. You can use your own um, veggie wash, veggie or fruit wash, and wash them real, real good when you get home, all right? Especially if they're not organic. And this is not a session about organic, but I will mention organic at some times, all right? All right, so let's just go for it. First of all, I guess I know you all know the name what I'm doing today, I'm doing desserts. But how about, I am hungry, I need some food and just me, I'm just the type of person, like I have a craving for a good dessert after I eat my food. So, you know, I'm not one of those people that can just go for dessert first, that's not me. But I'm going to do it tonight, you know, I'm gonna kind of do it in, in a reverse way. So y'all ready? Yes, you're ready. All right. So the first dessert that I'm doing is a healthy dessert. All right. And I'm going to give you a little bit of education on the ingredients, but very short and easy recipes. And for sure, for sure, a great, 
<laughs> I want to say a great substitute for um, uh, apple pie. So you all know it's a, uh, they call it apple crisp um, normally, or apple crisp or, uh, but this one is called a no bake because you don't put it in the oven. It's something that when you have a craving, so when you have a craving at night, you know, a lot of times you're watching TV, you say, mm, I want something good to eat. That's what my mother used to say. I got a taste for something good, right? And so this is one that you can whip up really, really quickly on top of the stove. You don't have to bake it at all. So it's called a no-bake appleberry crisp, all right? So now what you need is apple, of course, apple, right? This one here actually is a honey crisp apple, honey crisp. Um, there's so many, so many apples. So the first thing I want you all to do, get, get your fingers ready on the chat. And I want you to just drop in the chat some apples, some the names, name some apples for me. Name some apples for me. Go ahead and type, type, type in the chat. And then somebody's going to read it off to me. One of, one of the young ladies is going to read it off to me, what you said. Go ahead, get busy. Type a name of an apple. All right, so far we have Granny Smith and Honeycrisp. Oh, now they're coming in. Gala, Pink Lady, Granny Smith, Rome, Granny Apples, Envy. Awesome. Yes. And those honey crisps, these are honey crisps. These are really, really sweet, kind of like honey. But also those pink ladies, somebody mentioned that. Very good, very good, very sweet. But there's thousands, thousands names of apples. Did you get any more yet? We have a couple more, Jonathan and Macintosh. Wait a minute, Jonathan. I've never heard of Jonathan. I have to Google that real quick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it might be a Jonathan. It might be a Jonathan. I don't know. All I know is there are a lot of apples. And so what I talked about the sweetest apple. What do you think the one, one of those that you just mentioned is not as sweet? Anybody know? Not really sweet. Not really sweet. You just, you mentioned it. Oh, wait. oh, we got it. I think Granny Smith. Granny Smith, for sure. Granny Smith is bitter, tart, all of that, all of the above, right? But Granny Smith, actually, so if it's not that sweet, that means it doesn't have that much sugar in it, right? So to that point, to that point, when you're making this dessert, if you are having issues with diabetes, you want to go with the Granny Smith apple because it doesn't have that much sugar. It's going to uh, contain some sugar, but not as much as this Honeycrisp or that Pink Lady or those other good, good um, apples. So somebody mentioned Macintosh. Macintosh apple, normally people use Macintosh for, um, for applesauce because it's, it gets kind of mushy. You know, and 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 a mushy apple is great for um, for applesauce, but um, or uh, an apple pie, all right? So that's just a little education. But um, what I want to tell you, I'm going to get back to the health benefits of an apple because what I like to do is talk about how you eat to live. So although this is a special treat, quote unquote, dessert satisfying those cravings, you want to always be aware of what you're putting in your mouth and the purpose of it, especially if you're dealing with uh, health issues, right? And so what you're trying to do is you're, you're juggling, you're balancing the healthy part um, versus the part that's trying to satisfy that tongue, you know, that the craving, right? And so you want to balance it out so that, you know, it won't be as bad as a, a regular McDonald's apple pie. <laughs> I just, that's, look, let me not go there. But anyway, <laughs> apple. So I'm going to tell you, give you a simple way. Now, a lot of people may already know, but a simple way to cut an apple, just to peel an apple. So I like to take an apple peeler. It's called an apple peeler. It's called a potato peeler. I use it. I use this for 
everything, peeling carrots, everything. So you're going to take the top of the apple and go around the top of it. You're twisting it. All right. Then you turn it over and you twist. There you go. Now, these come um, flat, you know, kind of like a scraper also. I like this one. This one you get at the dollar store for how much? A dollar seventy-five, because the dollar store has gone up now. <laughs> it's not a dollar anymore. But anyway, my point is you get it pretty cheap if you go to that store. And then you're just going to peel down. Just go down, twist around, and you're going to get the peel. Now, this is what I want to say about the peeling. The apple peel, the 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 uh the skin on the apple. Oh, let me let let me let you answer it. What nutrient is found in the skin of the apple? Go ahead and type it in the chat. So far, we have fiber. That's it. Oh, <laughs> you know I love doing this because. You know, there's some smart people, smart people. The fiber, that's where most of the uh, uh, fiber is in the skin. Fiber lives in the skin. Now, of course, the whole apple has fiber, but you eat the skin, it's extra. What is fiber good for? Why, do you, why are you concerned about having all this fiber? What does fiber do for your body? Y'all taking notes? You didn't know this was going to be school or class. <laughs> What's fiber good for? Nobody said anything yet. We have keeping you full. Keeping you full. And so let's build on that. Open that up some. I like it. Digestion. Digestion. So open that up some. So that means what? <laughs> Good for movement. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you, Ms. Velma. <laughs> movement, it, it, help, it keeps things moving, right? Through the digestive tract. And so, listen, so many people tell me I don't move anything for three or four days. That's not healthy. You should be moving after you eat. Every time after you eat, you should be, it should be coming out. And so eating an apple a day may help that may help that because it's full of fiber. So I'm going to take my apple now and I'm just going to slice it. And listen, this is your food. You don't have to be Chef Boyardi or none of the, or Martha Stewart, you know. Now, if you're cooking this for some guests, you might want to, you know, get a little fancy, get a, a, a apple slicer. I have several apple slicers, but if you're doing this for yourself and you're hungry and um, you want a nice little treat at night, nobody had time to find no apple slicer. But you found an apple, that's good enough, <laughs> right? So just slice your apple. You can cut it up. Now, if you like it, you can like you do it. Small slices, doesn't matter. And I'm just going to slice it. Some couple of pieces. Yes. Now, in my pan, over here in my pan, I just have about a fourth of a cup of water. And I'm going to lay my apple slices over in the water. Lay it over here. And I'm just going to let it. Um, simmer, just let them simmer and get kind of soft. My apples, I'll put the top on it. And while it's in the juice, it's going to be making a little apple juice. How about that? Now, I have a couple of, of, of um, tips, some information about apples. I'm going to share with you while this is going for a little bit. It's so easy, but I'm, 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 I am going to give you this information. Let me tell you about apples. You know, you know what they say, what do they say about an apple? An apple a day, what? I'll wait. 
an apple a day. That's just not a saying. That's this is true. The keeps apple a the day doctor away. keeps the doctor away. What? That's right. Because number one, it's gonna help help keep that stomach flat and keep the digestive tract moving. But let me tell let me tell you why. Apples are sweet, sour, and alkaline. You want your food to be, you want to eat alkaline food and not acidic foods because acidic foods causes those little aches and pains in your body. So um, apples are great. And I'm talking about, these are all apples, all those that we named, all right? Um, rich in flavonoids, beta carotene, vitamin B, vitamin C, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, all right? The more tart an apple is, the higher its vitamin C content. So that means that Granny Smith apple, vitamin C, all right? It's tart, but it's going to give you that vitamin C you need. Apples are high in pectin, which is the fiber, which is where, what the fiber is. It's pectin, all right? Now, an apple can lower blood sugar. I mean, I'm sorry, not blood sugar, blood pressure blood pressure, and cholesterol levels. You're going to be eating an apple. We should be eating an apple every day. Now, the fruit has, you're ready for this? You're not, get ready. Antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, astringic, a diuretic, tonic, all of these uh, benefits from an apple, from eating an apple. It also can help stabilize your, um, your blood sugar levels. So apple is great. It promotes good digestion. We talked about that. It can prevent intestinal fermentation, that things that grow inside your intestines. And it can reduce colon inflammation, help reduce constipation. That makes sense, right? Because it's going to, the fiber helps um, get things moving. So apples, guess what? Benefit in cases of arthritis pain, edema, gout, morning sickness, asthma, hardening of the arteries, skin disease, liver, and gallbladder. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sold. Are you? Are you sold? Eating an apple. If you have problems with chewing an apple, just cut it up and mash it up, blend it up, eat it, eat it any kind of way you need to, to get those health benefits. I'm just saying, y'all talk back to me. Is that some good information about an apple or what? That's some good information. I'm just telling you, I don't need your confirmation. It's some good information about an apple. And it's so many different good apples. And they don't have to be this big. And guess what? You don't even have to eat a whole apple. Just eat a half of one every day if that's an issue for you. All right. Let's get back to the cooking, the, um, the um, recipe. All right. I have my apple in here. It smells divine in here. I always say that, but it does. It smells divine. Now, what I'm going to do next is add some berries. Now, this is an apple berry crisp recipe, kind of like a, um, what do they call it? Apple brown Betty or whatever those old, old terms for it. But this is mixed berries. So in here is strawberries, is um, blueberries, raspberries, all different berries. So I'm going to put One cup, it would be one cup if you're making a lot, but you know, we're doing virtual. So this is just for me and my husband. So I'm not gonna do a whole cup in here, but I'm gonna put at least two big spoonfuls in here. And I use, you're, normally you're gonna use two apples, but I'm cutting it in half again because this is virtual and I haven't eaten dinner and I don't wanna eat all of, all of this, a whole lot. All right, so adding the berries. So this is apple and berries, right? Now, the best thing to do is right now, because everything is going up and so expensive in the stores, what I did was 
I actually bought the frozen mixed berries, okay, the bag. And you can go to, right now, you can go to Aldi's or Lidl or Walmart and get your berries in a bag, frozen. And then what you're going to do is you bring them home, open them, put them in a bowl, and let them thaw out. Okay? Now, in a perfect, good, better situation, you could just buy some fresh berries and use fresh berries. But each container of fresh berries are about seven, eight dollars each. And they're small containers right now. So your best bet, you're going to get them. These are fresh berries that was frozen. Okay. The only ingredient on your bag should say what the berries are and nothing else. Strawberry, blueberry, raspberry, those should be your ingredients. Okay. And then that's what it is. So and when you let them thaw out, all the, all the nice juices, the aroma in here is amazing. All right. So water, apples, and my berries. I let it simmer for at least five, five minutes. But what I'm going to do now is add some oats. These are rolled oats, oatmeal. And I'm going to put about a half a cup of oatmeal. Everybody should have oatmeal. Oatmeal is great. For, oh, I almost dropped it. Oatmeal is great for fiber as well and your iron. Rolled oats. And it's a whole grain. Better than any, um, listen, I know some people that used to use um, Bisquick. Bisquick. Full of full of stuff in, <laughs> full of um, processed and chemicals and a Bisquick. We're going to use, and that, that was just for a, a, a crust, right? We're going to use oats, rolled oats. Remember I said you eat to live? So we're using rolled oats. Now, what I'm going to put in here now is some cinnamon, ground cinnamon, Real cinnamon, sprinkle the cinnamon over in there. It's going to give it nice sweetness. Now, the rest of the sweetness is coming from your apple and your berries. Cinnamon. What is cinnamon good for? Cinnamon is great. Great. It's a catalyst. It actually, cinnamon is great for also hypertension. All right. And, but it, it is, uh, it helps to carry the foods to the parts of your body that it needs to go to. So cinnamon is great. All right. So we have your apples. We have a little bit of water, your cut up apples. And then we have your berries, your um, mixed berries, cinnamon, and your rolled oats, your oat, oatmeal. Okay. You're going to let it simmer for at least five minutes. Let it simmer. I'm going to stir it in my pan. We've got a question. Can you sure. add nuts to this? And of course you can. If you're a nut person. I, I, I myself, I don't prefer nuts to my food, adding nuts while I'm eating. I like my nuts to be separate from my food. That's just me. But some people like it. I would say walnuts. Some people like walnuts. It's very, very good. Walnuts or pecans or almonds, whatever nuts or mixed nuts. Absolutely. If that's what you like, if that's what you like, that's what you do. Absolutely. Yes. So that's stirred up really, really nicely. Now, I like to eat it just like this. Now, if you don't want your oatmeal to be almost raw, then you let it cook down some. But I like it just like this. Now. Roz, you would can, you, would, if you were going to add nuts, would you want them to be salt-free? Absolutely salt-free. Raw is the best. Raw is the best. Raw nuts. So that would be all of your. And you can add seeds to it, too. You can add your pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds. Oh. And then that would take it to a whole nother level 
as well. For sure. Thank for you. Sure. Did somebody ask that question? Or we, they or did. That yeah, it's a great question. Oh, yeah. That's a great question. I love it. I love, I love this audience. I wish I was on here every week. All right. So that is basically your apple berry crust. You put it in a, um, a bowl. You can top this. You can top it with your nuts and seeds. You can top it with the next, um, what I'm going to do over here. Let me just go ahead and do it right now. I'm not going to keep you waiting. So what I'm doing next is a uh, fruit and yogurt parfait. But I'm going to take, this is actually a brand. It's called Silk. And this one is made with almond milk. So this is a plant-based yogurt. And this is one of my favorite desserts anyway, with the apple, um, the apple berry crisp. And so what I do is I take some of this yogurt and put it on top. And it kind of reminds you of ice cream. Let me come around here so you can really see it. Look at that. You put it in a nice, cute little cup. And oh, you turn yeah. your television on and watch your favorite show. And you have very little guilt when you eat this. Mm. This is one of my Everyone favorite. Everyone is saying it looks delicious, yummy. Oh my gosh, it's so it looks good. Looks really good. Mm. This is one of my favorite. Really, really, my my favorite. One of my favorite desserts, and it's so quick. The key is, first of all, you're going to keep oatmeal in your house because everybody should be eating oatmeal at some point, at least a couple of times a week, for that extra fiber and that iron. And even if you don't eat it every um, a couple of times a week, um, you're going to have it in there because a lot of people like oatmeal during the, during the winter time. It's a nice, great, get warms your body, right? So have a, keep an apple. You can do this with pears. You can do it with peaches. Just keep some fruit. And if nothing else, you can have it with some, um, and make sure you keep your frozen fruit your frozen berries in the freezer. And that way, when you feel like something, you can go do it and do it quickly, okay? All right, we're gonna move right. Any, any questions about the uh, apple berry crisp? Well, we any did questions? have one participant say that they're getting ready to go make this right now. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the same thing. I might make this for dessert this evening. Um, right. Because you have all the ingredients, right? I think I do. Mm -hmm. Alicia also says that peaches add a nice twist, and they have frozen peach slices as well. Yes, absolutely. So that would be kind of like a peach cobbler, kind of like a peach cobbler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now we're gonna move to my next recipe. My next. I think, I don't know if it's my favorite, but anyway, all of them are good. This is called fruit and yogurt parfait. Where did I get that from? I got it from McDonald's, the Golden Arches. They sold a parfait. And then um, also, I think you can get them at Starbucks. You can get them, um, I think you can get them at Panera Bread. So all the, all the fast food places are selling these fruit and yogurt parfaits. And they cost a ton. <laughs> they cost a lot. So you can do your own. You can do your own. And I'm going to show you how. You're going to still use these same berries. But let's talk about the yogurt. Now, I use a plant-based yogurt. Tell me why you think uh, I'm not using a dairy yogurt. And tell me why you think I'm not using dairy. Somebody write that. Go ahead and guess that for me. Guess that for me. Why you think? What, what's going on with dairy? Why would I say, mm, I don't want to use dairy? This is a healthier dessert. So keep that in mind when you answer the question. I 
Oh no. Is it coming? Is it coming to them? We don't have any answers yet. Um, Velma was wondering if you could add low fat whipped cream instead. Oh, for the appleberry cream? For the appleberry, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you can order. I mean, you can, if that's, so this is the thing. Everybody is different, you know? So if you don't have any issues with dairy, then yes, you can use uh, non, I mean, um, the, the whipped cream. But did you know there's a plant-based whipped cream? And so that's kind of crossing over into my uh, question. My question is, why are we using plant-based and not dairy? Plant-based is non-dairy. So the reason why is because a lot of times dairy, milk products, butter, milk, cheese, dairy products will cause inflammation. So we had we some are, guesses in the chat after that, and they all got it right. A lot of them said inflammation. So people go. are thinking on your same wavelength. There you go. It will cause inflammation. And so not only and and um and also a lot of fl extra phlegm in your upper um airways and your sinuses, it just causes it just wreaks havoc over your whole body. It can be um in your organs, everywhere. So non-plant-based is better. And nowadays, it's it's it used to be just soy, right? But now it's almond milk. It's coconut milk, it's hemp milk, it's cashew milk. Um, I said coconut. So it's, it's a lot of options that we can have. But guess what? Not only is it milk, but it's in yogurt. There are plant-based butters that you can use that, that you know, substitute um, healthier options, should I say. So I'm using... Silk almond milk, yogurt. Now, the one thing I want to say is that normally I like Greek yogurt. Does anybody know the difference between Greek yogurt and the regular yogurt? Does anybody know that? Have you, I know everybody's heard of Greek yogurt. I don't know. But hopefully everybody's heard of Greek yogurt. Any answers? Uh, we've got one. Is it strained? Well, who in the world said that? Oh, we've got a couple people that guessed that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just love y'all. This is just so amazing. Yes. And so that's the difference. But did y'all hear me say that before? No, I'm just kidding. But um, it's, it's great because, yes, what it, what it means is, you know, doing the process of making yogurt, you use a lot of milk, whatever it is, a, a regular cow's milk or almond milk or whatever milk. You use a lot of milk. And so you strain it. So the more the, the straining process, they go back and forth, straining it and then strain it again and strain it again. They get most of the liquid out, which makes the Greek yogurt thicker. It's not as much liquid in that yogurt. And I particularly prefer Greek yogurt. But the Greek yogurt, plant-based, the plant-based Greek yogurt that I normally get, I couldn't find it in the stores. And I haven't been able to find it um, at all. So I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know if the pandemic has, has, um, has uh, affected them, that company. But anyway, I went on and got the uh, regular almond milk by Silk. Now, there, there's one Coke. Um, so delicious. Um, there's several brands out there. All right, so the fruit and yogurt parfait. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm forgetting something, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So you get a nice, pretty glass because, again, you want to make sure this is a really, really cute dessert. The McDonald's and Panera, they put it in a nice little plastic container, right? But you're at home, and you can make it look cute, really, really cute. All right, so what we have, let me tell you the ingredients. We have our berries, the same frozen berries, unthawed, right? Berries, we have raw honey. I'm going to talk about this raw honey. We have raw honey, and we have the yogurt, and I have some granola. 
a nice granola. This is a um, hazelnut. So this is a hazelnut granola. And so you talk about having nuts, you can do any type of granola on top. That's just a topper, all right? So what are we gonna do first? First, what I'm going to do is get my spoon here, take my glass, and I'm gonna put some berries at the bottom. Really, really nice. You know that fruit on the bottom and the yogurt? <laughs> they have fruit on the bottom. I'll put my, my berries down there. Nice. Hold it up a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, where's my other little spoon? Well, let me just pour it over in here. My honey, and I'm going to put the honey in the yogurt. And so you all are going to get this recipe. That's a tablespoon of honey. This is raw organic honey. Okay. Plain yogurt, plain, plain yogurt, or you can get vanilla yogurt, but I use plain for this. All right, and I'm gonna put my yogurt on top. And this will be really, really nice for guests if you're having company over and make them feel really, really special, like, oh, you've been busy. Yes. Roz, do you make your own granola? No. <laughs> Did somebody ask that? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, I'm going to tell you a secret. I don't normally do granola unless I do um, this these recipes. But so granola... Actually, if you have diabetes, you should not use granola. Granola, the way they make granola stick together is they use a lot of sugar. And then they bake it. So I don't normally use a, a granola unless I'm doing this, a little topping. All right, so there's my berries. I have berries at the bottom, then, then, um, then the yogurt. You kind of layer it. You layer it. Layer. And, ah, uh, this is so good, y'all. I'm just telling you. I'm going to dig into this after I eat my dinner. Yes, yogurt. And then you can put another layer of fruit on top. It's a little bit. And you're getting your antioxidants. You know, your berries are full of antioxidants. We need that. We need all of the antioxidants. Fight off a lot of these viruses and colds and flus, right? And then, heck it. All right. And then I'm going to top it off with the granola. And that is your fruit and yogurt. Parfait. Let me come around here so you can see it. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Is that beautiful? I love the use of the wine glass, too. You use a wine glass and you sit back and you put on your favorite television show. And you just sit and you just. Mm. <laughs> it's very pretty with all the layers. They're pretty. Now, a Greek yogurt wouldn't be as thin. It would be a little thicker. So it wouldn't, you know, mix. But listen, and a, listen, I will, I will go ahead and just mix it all up together and eat it anyway. But you can top this with, um, with walnuts, any type of nuts you want, um, or use a granola, or like someone said, a whipped cream. Uh, 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 you can use a low-fat whipped cream or a um, non-dairy whipped cream. We had two questions. Uh huh. Sure. Can you use um, stevia instead of honey? So you would use what a um, well stevia come? Yes. The answer is yes, because stevia. But you won't use a lot. You cannot use a lot of stevia. The 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 stigma. <laughs> 
that stevia has is that people, a lot of people say it has an aftertaste. Oh, it has an aftertaste. I don't like it. That's what people tell me. Oh, I don't like it. It has an aftertaste. But what doesn't have an aftertaste? If you think about it, right? Yeah, what doesn't have an aftertaste? But the point is that the thing is with stevia, so stevia comes in um, stevia comes in liquid form and in powder form. So it just depends. You can use it, but be careful of how much you use of the stevia because it will definitely turn your what you thought would be a perfect dessert to a disaster. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know for a fact. That that's what will happen. So um, the answer is yes. And um, you can use stevia. You can use coconut sugar. You can use uh, coconut nectar, which I like. On, on the recipe that you all will receive, you'll see that I have on there a honey or coconut nectar. And the coconut nectar, I love that one too, but it, it, the coconut nectar will give it a teeny little hint of a coconut flavor, right? But I'm not a coconut person, but I like this coconut nectar. So it's just a hint of that flavor of the coconut, but it's the nectar from the real coconut fruit, all right? So, um, so but any plant-based, you can use, um, what is the new one on the, the new guy on the block? Monk fruit, any plant-based sugar, sweetener you can use. All right. Any, anybody have anything, any more questions? Uh, the other question we have is, is the granola you, that you used unsweetened? No, <laughs> I've never seen an unsweetened granola. So if you know of one, now I'm pretty sure maybe the people, keto people probably have put together a unsweetened granola. But like I said, most of the most granola, the way it sticks together is sugar and they bake it. And then the sugar melts and sticks those clunks together in granola. So I've never seen that. But if you find it and you have issues with diabetes or you want to make sure your blood, sh uh, blood sugar level stays at bay, then definitely use it if you find it. All right. What I do want to talk about really, really um, um, quickly, just for a little bit, I talked about the apples in the other recipe. And over here, I want to talk about the honey because I get questions about honey. What is the big deal about honey? And why is honey, you know, why is it a lower um, uh, honey? And a higher honey. When I say that, I mean as far as pricey. Because you can find honey in a dollar store. But what I found sometimes in a dollar store, if you turn around and read the label, it'll say honey-like product. So you got to be mindful of that. And then there's a, a Manuka honey, which can cost $55 for a small, a small jar. But what is the big big deal about honey and why raw versus not unraw or whatever. But I'm going to give you eight healthy benefits of raw honey. Okay. Just eight. All right. Number one, raw, and I'm talking about raw honey, right? Healthy weight measurements, weight loss. Honey consumption, the consumption of honey can help in weight loss. All right. Number two, Where's honey come from? A bee, right? So pollen, bee pollen is helpful with allergies. What? Allergies. That's what we're, a lot of people are having right now is allergies. Welcome, spring. Thank you, spring. I love to see you, spring. But people do not want to deal with these seasonal allergies. Honey. Honey, raw honey is, is, is your answer, all right? Honey, honey, honey. Number three, it's a natural energy source. Natural energy source. Um, runny, um, 
Raw honey contains natural sugar, 80%, water, 18%, and minerals, vitamins, pollen, and protein. So um, it provides an easily absorbed supply of energy in form of liver, um, in form of the liver, in the liver. All right. So it makes making it a de- ideal for energetic morning starts and as pre and post exercise energy source. So add honey, get some green tea, green tea <laughs> energetic, and add some honey to it. And get on out there and walk. <laughs> do do your exercise in the morning, or it's a great pick me up during the afternoon, right? And tomorrow, honey. All right, number four. It's an antioxidant powerhouse. Honey is it boosts helps boost your immune system for sure. Raw honey. Number five. Let me get down to it. Number five. Number five. It helps promote sleep. Sleep promoter. Raw honey promotes restorative sleep in two ways. By consuming honey before bedtime, it restocks the liver and uh, prevents the brain from triggering a, a crisis search for fuel. So um, it, 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 it helps to help you calm you down as well as wake you up in the morning. So at night, you can do maybe a spoonful of, of raw honey. And then also... It, it, it also helps to release melatonin. You know, melatonin is great for sleep. That's a, a, a hormone for sleep, all right? Number six, wound and ulcer healer. Now, I learned this when I was in, um, in school. Definitely, you can put honey on a wound and it will help heal the wound, a deep cut or scratch. It will help heal a wound. I didn't. I don't know if you knew that. You might have, because you're some smart people. And also for burns. So if you if you burn yourself in the kitchen while you're cooking one of my recipes, slap some honey on that on that burn. Yes. All right. Diabetes aid. A consumption of raw honey can reduce the risk of developing diabetes and help aid medication used to treating um, to treat diabetes. So the combination of raw honey and cinnamon can be especially beneficial to sh- blood sugar management. Raw honey and cinnamon, all right? Yep, yep. And number eight, a natural cough syrup. Natural cough syrup. I make my own cough syrup. I, I make it around um, July, no later than August, and I'll put garlic in there, I'll put onion in there, and I'll put the honey in there and put it in a jar, a mason jar, and um, and let it sit for months. And then that is my cough syrup. I'll put elderberry in there also. And it's a homemade cough syrup. If you have a sore throat, you can take a spoonful of raw honey and just let it slowly go down your throat and it will help. It will help relieve a sore throat. So your the honey is amazing. It's amazing. And there's all kinds of honey that's on the market. And the, the highest one that I've seen, when I say high, I mean, <laughs> most expensive one is the Manuka. But the Manuka is, I believe, in, mainly in Switzerland. And they use that for everything. And I know that I have a personal testimony about the Manuka honey. My mother-in-law had uh, stage four cancer and she was going through um, chemo. And so she had burnt, uh, her throat was raw, raw. And I bought the Manuka honey, paid $55 for it. And I had her to just take a small, a half a teaspoon and swallow it, maybe um, three or four every three or four hours initially for the first day. And it, within 24 hours, her sore throat, it healed the back of her throat. Manuka, honey. I'm talking about the Manuka, honey. So it worked. It works. Definitely works. So that's the education on the honey, you guys. That's all I have on the honey. Was that helpful? Was that helpful information? Very helpful. We do have a question. If you used honey and cinnamon and green tea, how much would you use? 
You said, say that again. If you used honey and cinnamon in green tea, how much would you use? Okay, so you use uh, about a half a teaspoon of honey. You know, and that's hard for me to say because I don't put honey, I don't put sweetener in my tea. So, so I would start off with a little bit, right? And so I would say a half a teaspoon of honey. And then cinnamon, just put some sprinkles of cinnamon. Sprinkle the cinnamon, get the one with the sprinkle and, um, and sprinkle the cinnamon in there. Um, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. And the green tea, you're going to use a green tea bag. I like to, when I'm using tea bags, because normally I, I make my own um, teas, green teas, loose leaf, and I put them together with other great herbs. But if you have to use a tea bag, I use two tea bags of uh, two green tea. So if I go out to a restaurant and they say, would you like some tea? And I say, do you have green tea? They say, yes. I said, bring me two bags because in that bag, most of the time in the restaurants, it has a little bit of the tea in the bag. So I'll get two, make it really, really strong and add, I don't normally add anything to mine, but you can add your honey or whatever you need to add to it. Your, your plant-based sweetener. Another question? We had some folks earlier asking about agave. Ah, mm -hmm. agave is good. Agave is plant-based. Agave is a plant that, that resembles a cactus. So about agave is great. It's great for to help um, monitor, I mean, to use for people who have um, diabetes. And um, so is hypoglycemic. But what I want to say about agave, get the raw agave if you can. Raw agave. Anything raw, it means that it's, it's, it's come extracted straight from that plant and it's not processed. So in the stores, you'll see agave and you'll see them different uh, colors. Very, very light in color. Like I, I went to um, Aldi's and they have one that's very, very light in color. You can see through it. And, and so when it's light in color versus dark, that means that it's going through a process over and over and over again. And so what happens when it goes through a process? It's starting to be stripped from, from, um, from the original state. So the darker it is, the better it is for your body, all right? But the darker it is, the more expensive it is, you know? So you got you to weigh that out. You have to weigh it out. If you have an extra $6 to buy the dark raw agave, as well as the dark raw honey, as well as your dark 100% molasses, I mean, um, maple syrup, you know, all of those are plant-based but they're going to cost more. So you got to weigh it out. Awesome. That was the only question. We did have one question from earlier, and this is actually about a previous session that you did. What? Um, I just wanted to squeeze it in because it was asked. Yeah. And the salad dressing you made was the first recipe this month. How long can you keep that salad dressing? You have it. If you have it, in a mason jar, tightly sealed in your refrigerator. You should be able to keep it for a long time, for months. Um, I've kept I've kept it for maybe like three, four months, for maybe four months in the refrigerator. I keep it in the back of the refrigerator where it's the coldest and in a, like I said, a mason jar, you know, with the tight seal. And it should be good. It should stay fresh. Awesome. We have yeah. one more quick question. Is there a moderately priced raw honey or agave that you are aware of? Mo you say moderately priced? Yes. So this is what I would say. I like Trader Joe's 
okay? Now, Trader Joe's has an agave. I think it's about $5, but it's, um, the container is not that big, all right? So if you're by yourself and you're the only person using it, then I would go to Trader Joe's and buy that one, spend that $5, and you monitor how much you use it. And if you, um, if you monitor it, then, you know, and you know how much you spent, <laughs> then it's going to last you for a long time, right? Because you only need a little bit of it. And you got, and that goes with just retraining your mind and your tongue, just telling yourself, that's all I need, if you need any. So I would say Trader Joe's. I like Trader Joe's is, uh, prices. Um, the second one would be Lidl. They have a nice um, prices on honey as well as the agave. Lidl. I've run into all these sometimes, but most of the time I go to Lidl which they are, you know, they, they're related to each other some kind of way. But um, Lidl, I find better, um, not better prices, but better variety options, should I say, for he healthier options in food, nutritional options. I want to say this, you should put this in the refrigerator if you're not going to eat it right away. Like, so I need to put that in the refrigerator because I'm definitely not eating that until I eat my dinner. We've got one last question that I think we can squeeze in. What are your thoughts on plant-based oat milk? Oh, so I like oat milk. I like oat milk, and it's mainly from oats. So I like it. Um, you just have to read the ingredients. Um, read uh, Depends on, there's different brands that are coming out with oat milk. And so just like anything else, just read your ingredients. Just make sure it doesn't have a lot of sugar if, you, if you're having issues with diabetes. Because a lot of times they will add a lot of sugar just so that you can drink it, you know. But for me, honestly, I like to get unsweetened, all of them, unsweetened plant-based milks. Because when I was a milk drinker, a regular milk drinker, it was plain milk. So when I transitioned to plant-based milk, the, the, the vanilla milk, the, all the, you know, the sweeteners and all, it was too sweet for me. It did not taste, it didn't, it was not similar to the regular cow's milk that I was used to. So it just depends. So for example, when I make uh, mashed potatoes, I use regular unsweetened milk. So you got to look at your labels. You have to look at how many, if you're obese, you got to look at the calories. You have to look at all of that. You have to do your research, look at all of it, and then choose the one that's best for you, not what's best for the girlfriend that told you to go buy it. All right? So use that one. But I like oat milk. My husband loves oat milk. He brings oat milk. He likes the chocolate. They only make it in chocolate and, and the, um, vanilla right now. But I'm sure the other ones are going to come out. Awesome. I think that's all the time we have for today. We took it right to seven o'clock. <laughs> well, thank you all. Are you going to tell them about my? Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, what do you got going on? Go ahead. No, no. I was going to say the, the, the next one next week. You got y'all got to be here next week. Next, yes, you do. I, was making that one today but next week next thursday yeah I'm so we're i'm going to tell you about it tonight <laughs> we want your feedback thank you all so much for attending um i'm going to actually share a survey in the chat right now if you have time and uh would like to complete it right now that would be awesome and if not we're going to send out an email following this evening um if you complete the survey you'll be entered in to complete a drawing a $25 gift card. And um, if you would like the recording, please just email us at wellness at pgparks.com. I'll put that in the chat as well. And we will make sure we get that to you. 
And we are wrapping up National Nutrition Month. So next week we have two events in the evening time. On Tuesday, we um, have a plant-based eating nutrition workshop with Giant from 6 to 7 p.m. And on Thursday, we're back with Chef Roz uh, on March 31st from 6 to 7. And she is going to be making vegan crab cakes and succulent spinach. Yum, yum. <laughs> so we hope to see you all then. Thank you all so much and have an excellent rest of your evening. Thank you for joining us for National Nutrition Month. For more videos to help you make healthier choices, visit the Department of Parks and Recreation's online resource center at pgparks.com or the Health and Wellness Virtual Library at wellness.pgparks.com. Until next time, be healthy, be well. Thank you all. Have a great night.